Hi everyone! Welcome everyone! Welcome to today's paint party. It is almost six o'clock so um, we're just gonna get settled in and get ready for today's paint party. Um, today we're gonna be painting um, a really nice um, spring-ish kind of picture. We're gonna be painting our version of this picture right here. So it's flower basket on a nice bicycle. So this is our inspiration image. So what I mean by that is I pick images online that I really enjoy. And then what I do is I talk you through how I would approach painting our version of it. So I want you to make this your own. You can stick to kind of the same feel and the style and color as the one that's here if you want. Or you can throw in whatever you want. If you want to put lilacs or sunflowers or make the bike red or whatever you want. This is your painting so you can do anything you like. Um, and what I would say is if there's something that you're doing that's working out well that you want to share, please put that in the comments and um, share with everyone here. Um, let's make this very fun and collaborative. It's hard for you to share though when you're into your painting, so I, I get that. Um, so yeah, if you want to drop in and say hi, let me know where you're from. That'd be fantastic. Um, and we'll get started just a little bit after six just to give everyone who wants to join in time to ensure that they find us okay. Also, um, just as a heads up, which I did try to write in my posts, um, just uh, be cautious if there's any random links that pop up. Don't click on the links. This is free. This is it. If you can see me, you are where you're supposed to be. <laughs> Don't click the links. Don't pay for this. This is free. Um, and all my paint parties are free, so they're all on the Facebook page, so you can go under videos, and if there's other ones you want to do, you can watch them whenever you want. Um, I believe, I think tonight is paint night 30. So this has been 30 paint nights that we've done, which is amazing! So thank you guys for, um, supporting and jumping on and sharing and having fun. Oh, there's a scammer right now! Donjoy Dev, you are not real. You are a scammer. Do not click on that link. Uh, oh nice, I can block it right here. Perfect, there you go. So I'm gonna try to block as I see. Um, if you guys see other links like that, um, please feel free to block them because they are not accurate. <laughs> hi everyone, I'm so glad you guys are jumping in. Hi Karen, hi Joanne, I saw some more too earlier, sorry. Hi Debbie, hi Anita. Fantastic, okay, I'm gonna grab my coffee. I put it a little far away, uh, my apologies for that weird angle, but I do want to have my coffee cup and my water close to me. As, even though, granted, every time I do, I usually let it sit there until it's cold, <laughs> so I drink it after the paint party, but that's okay. So, okay, awesome. So, for anyone who's jumping on, so again, oh, wow, lots of scammy scammers today. Block you, buddy. All right, there we go. When I can see it, I block them. All right. Hello, Danita. Hey, Pam G. How are ya? Awesome, okay. So yes, so this is our painting that we're gonna do. So if you haven't already, I suggest you grab um, a screenshot of this picture. Maybe not from this live, but you can always like exit it if you need to. Go on the post and just have it available for you so that you can follow along. Sometimes, you paint everyone paints faster or slower so you can just have this as a reference as we're going through because I can't have it on the screen unfortunately when I'm doing it um, I have it just beside me so I can also reference too oh fantastic you're enjoying a coffee too Meredith awesome yeah I'm a coffee I'm not I don't uh, I'm not an alcohol drinker but I do drink coffee and caffeine at all hours <laughs> so so yeah that that's my drug Hello, Arula. Fantastic. Okay, great. So my canvas that I'm using is a canvas board, nice and thin, good for storage, 30 paint parties in. Um, so it's, it's thin, it's a canvas board. I get them from Amazon. So if that's something that you'd like to do, you can feel free, but really you can use anything. I know some people have painted on like plant pots. Some people are painting on sides of boxes. So whatever works, that's your canvas. You can use it. But in relation to your canvas, you should have 
um, paint brushes that kind of go with the size of your canvas. So I have like a large, a medium, and a fine brush that I use. Um, these are my go-to ones. They're the ones you'll see me always hold. These are um, really thick bristled ones. Again, I don't um, specifically endorse anything. I've had these since I was a teen um, and I love them. So whatever works for you, whatever you feel comfortable using, that's what you should be using. This is a nice fine point brush that I really enjoy. Um, so I just got these from Amazon and they have like a nice grip on them. So if anyone's looking for fine point, I would suggest something. It's been pretty great do you having the grip on it. Awesome. Oh, fantastic. Hi, Terry. I see a lot of names that I've seen you. Hey, Asif. I miss you too. I'm so glad. Oh, you're in Banff. Amazing. Oh, you guys traveling everywhere. I love it. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Okay, great. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Martha. Oh, Yannette, you're back. Yannette was with me in the early days. That's very exciting. She was painting a whole uh, mural on her bathroom last I saw on Facebook, so that's super cool. All right. So, okay. So first step, if you have long hair, let's tie that sucker back. I will inevitably get my hair in my paint if I do not do that or in my coffee. Also don't really want that. Maybe that's a, a beauty technique. This, if this is a beauty blog, maybe that would be a thing we would talk about. All right. So when we get started, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to approach this painting and how we're going to do it. So we always want to start with our backdrop. Okay. So I zoomed in and I didn't mean to. <laughs> so this backdrop is kind of cool. It's kind of a gray and white. So we want to definitely stick more with white and add a little bit of black to our paint when we're going to be playing with it. Oh, another scammer. I get you guys. I get you all. There you go. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, and then we're going to just make it it looks kind of like blotchy. This whole painting is very like free. So again, we can kind of play with it. If you want to try and stick with the painting strokes, the way this is flowing, we'll do that. Otherwise you can make it your own and make them more, um, what do you call it? More opaque, more detailed. It's up to you. It really is up to you. Okay. So we're going to start with that first. So let's get some white, quite a bit of white on our, um, palette, um, a little bit of black and we'll start with that process. Awesome. Yeah, um, honestly guys, I think um, starting October, because I've already set up my paint sessions till the end of September, um, I already have them like posted. In October, I think I'm gonna move it to Tuesday. Um, I work, um, my work week is Wednesday through Sunday. Another block, I'll block that person too. Um, I work Wednesday through Sunday and, and honestly doing it on Wednesdays I'm pretty tired. Um, so yeah, so I don't think I'm going to continue it on, um, on Wednesdays, but I will th I think I'm going to move them to Tuesday nights. So this will be like, I'll set it up for October. Like we'll keep things as it is for September, but, uh, I'm tired. <laughs> so <laughs> I apologize. Um, Terry's asking her canvas is not square. How will it translate? We're just going to go with it. <laughs> it's really my approach to most things. Mine isn't either. Mine is rectangular and I'm gonna go with it. I don't know what that means. Maybe the flowers are gonna be bigger. I'm gonna still kind of try to get the flow of the bike and try to get, maybe the bike's gonna stick out a little bit more. Potentially, maybe we could do it, maybe we wanna do it on a, holy baloney, they are nonstop today. I apologize, guys. I don't know how to stop with these people, um, these scammy scammies. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, don't click, don't click. Um, no clicking. Okay, so I'm gonna start to paint. Don't worry. All right, so I don't know, maybe I will do it on, I'm trying to think if I wanna do it this way. No, I think I'm still gonna stick with doing it like in portrait. Yeah, I'm still gonna stick with portrait and then maybe some of my bike won't stick on here as much. Maybe it'll be more off page. That'll be okay. And maybe I'll just focus on having a bigger bouquet. So really you can decide how you want to do it. Maybe you want to do yours um, on a landscape and then you can have the bike be more prominent and have the flowers kind of drape maybe. That could work too. So we can flex it in those type of ways. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you didn't fall for them, Julia. Oh my God. 
I'm so sorry. I don't know how to get rid of it. Maybe we have to transition to a different way of doing it. Um, but I don't want anyone to get caught with any scammy mixed scammers. I'll have to think about that. Okay, let's start. So let's get some white on our palette. I'm putting like a big old glob on there. I'll show you my palette in a moment. It is um, very um, dirty. But that's okay. Anyone who's joined me before knows that that's uh, that's my that's how I roll. So yeah, so lots of white, a little bit of black. That's what we're looking at. Okay, I'm gonna move this now. I'm going to put this here, and that might mean I might miss some of the scammy scammers. So please, if you see them pop up, if you are able to block it, do it. I don't know if you can. If you can't, um, maybe just comment and say, it's a scam, don't click, or something for anyone else, if you don't mind. <laughs> I, I don't have anyone to monitor this, because again, it's free. Um, okay, so let's start up. So I think the way I want to approach the coverage portion of it is I want to first put a coat of just water on here. Not super wet, um, but I do want to wet the entire thing, but I don't want it to be like dripping, okay? So let's just put water. This is just water for my water container, and I'm just gonna use my big brush, and I'm just going to wet the entire canvas. And this will just allow us to get the background covered once we put the paint on a lot easier. So acrylic is water-based. However, don't let that mean, that does not, that does not mean that um, it is washable. It is absolutely not washable. So if you get it on your clothes, you need to get that off before it dries or else you now have acrylic painted clothes. Okay, so right now I've just put in, oh my God, I've just, it's also annoying too because then the scammers take up the room so I can't see if you guys comment and that's super not cool. It really, ugh, really pisses me off. <laughs> it really bugs me. They're ruining it for the rest of us. Okay, so now it's wet, it's sleek. And now I'm gonna get just the white paint and I'm gonna start applying the white paint, which you're not gonna see really at all because the canvas is white and I'm just going to kind of go all over I'm not doing any particular pattern I'm just putting white on here right now okay just to get paint on here and anyone who's joining and who's like what are you doing I am painting white paint on a canvas <laughs> sounds like a, a scam in itself let me show you how to paint. Wasn't there like a painting a long time ago, like an actual like painter who like did that and it was like polar bear in a snowstorm or something and it was like a big thing. It's like, wow, the beauty. That's what we just did, guys. You guys just painted a masterpiece. Okay. So this is kind of blotchiness. So we're gonna play with it a bit. Um, we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black now on my brush. So I've kind of have like a bit of a layer. It's hard for me to tell, to be honest, like where all the white paint is and if I got it all. So we're gonna find out now. Um, and I'm just gonna put some black, just streak it in. And then I'm gonna dab the white and I'm just going to go kind of back and forth. And I think I wanna go in this kind of vertical way. This is, again, this is the background, so we're gonna cover this primarily up with lots of pretty colors and flowers. Okay. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going. So it's wet, so it's going, it's blending really easily. And I still want it to be streaky, so just putting like streaks of black and then I'm just going to blend it in but I don't want it to be like all gray right so kind of going over it a bit but then I'm like leaving it so you can see that there's like lines almost like a wood grain I guess trying to do kind of looks woody it's not exactly the way the background on that one is but that's what I think I'm doing today and then I'm gonna 
grab some white paint and just continue to mix it in with this. You also want to get your the sides. Okay. Another technique you could do for a background, if you're not digging the stripey stripey, is we did a technique a little while ago. Actually, I have the painting, which is cool. Um, we did this painting a little while ago where we had like flowers in the rain. And this background here um, is kind of like you do the same type of thing with black and white and you just do like a crisscrossy effect. And that looked really cool as a background too. So that could be a technique that you may want to do instead, um, which is basically you kind of get your paint and you just kind of go crisscrossy like that. Like you just go back and forth if you want. I want to do it more streaky, I think. So I want it to be a little darker in certain patches. Some abstract kind of feeling to it. Yeah, Rhonda, I agree. It's a good idea. <laughs> I'm just gonna pop. I think the last time they started coming on, they came on for like a bit at the beginning and then they wore off as it went on. So. Maybe they realize, like, once I start painting, people will realize, oh, she's painting. Clearly, I don't have to pay for this. And then they leave us alone. I'm not sure. It makes me so angry. I really don't like people taking advantage of people. It's not cool. So I'm just kind of playing with it a bit. I'm gonna put some, make it a little thicker, kind of to almost look like a board. So I just put some more black kind of in more of a strip here. So it almost looks like a board of wood. Okay. I think I'm to the point where I'm pretty happy with the backdrop. So again, this is just the backdrop to bike and our flowers so it's just plain simple and everything else is gonna pop on top of this right and you will notice I will say I'm gonna stop and then I end up continuing to add more <laughs> to it okay cool so there we go so I just have like a nice stripey background I saw another nice inspiration image that was similar to this that had like a almost like a brick wall background which looked really cool too it's another cool idea that would definitely take some time i think this painting is still going to take a good two hours realistically to do um so i don't really want to add more complexities to it but you can feel free to if you want to kind of touch this corner too much with my finger I'm just trying to get the sides a bit too. Mine's starting to dry up a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it for a little bit um, just so it can dry. And while it does that, I'm just going to clean off my, clean off the acrylic paint off my brush. I definitely went a little bit too crazy on pouring the white paint on my palette. <laughs> but I'm sure we will use it as we go. So that's okay. Again, I buy my stuff from the dollar store, so I don't stress so much if I use it. Um, I see someone saying, yes, so this is the picture here that we are painting today. Okay, so we're just doing the backdrop right now. And again, this is an inspiration, so the backdrop looks a little different than what shows here. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you can kind of make the background however you want to. Let's just have like kind of a gray wall wood kind of looking background so that our bike will pop. And then right now I'm just going to let this dry a little bit before we continue. Uh, Patty, yep, you definitely can. So um, this uh, is going to be available for you on the Lisa's Painting Party webpage. So you go on to, under videos, all the painting parties are there. They are all free 
do not pay anyone for anything because they are free and you can watch them whenever you want. All I ask is that if you do paint, I would love to see your paintings. So please share. I use acrylic paints. I use um, cheap dollar store paints. And I stick primarily with using um, primary colors and black and white because I feel that this should be accessible to everyone. So that's kind of my approach to it. So you, should, you don't have to pay a lot of money to be a painter and to enjoy it. Of course, the expensive paints I'm sure are beautiful. And if I try them, I probably will never want to not use them. But <laughs> for my pocketbook, let's stick with the dollar store paints. Okay, it's starting to dry up a little bit, which is good. Yep, Janice, it will be. It will be under the video section of Lisa's painting parties. Anytime, guys. Okay, so it's still pretty wet. I want to let it dry a little bit more. So the next step of it, I am going to show you the picture one more time so we can talk about the next step. So now that we have our backdrop, we are going to kind of plot in where we want that bike to live and we're going to do that with white paint mm -hmm. it's going to be kind of funny because we're using a lot of white um we'll do white maybe you could even make it a little bit light blue if you want to just to change it up a bit it's up to you um so yeah so we're going to plot that in by eye and i'll kind of talk you through how i'm approaching it again my canvas um is not a square like the picture um so it will you know i'll kind of talk you through the best i can with this Absolutely, Rhonda. Yeah, if you want to dry it out faster, absolutely, you can use a hair dryer. Especially if you ended up making the layer a little thicker, that could work. Just be cautious because if you are using a lot of thick, or if it's really thick paint, I'm saying thick a lot, <laughs> um, it might crack regardless when it's drying. So if you do it with a hair dryer, I might do that too. So just be cautious of that. Cool. Oh, thanks, Deanna. Yeah, I love this. I'm so glad you guys enjoy it. So far we just have comments, I like it. Regular people, not scammies, not scammers, I like it, it's good. I probably just jinxed it realistically, but it's okay. Okay, I do have, so I have like the primary colors. I do have premixed colors as well. Um, and I do tend to use them on my live paintings because it is easier for me to grab and, and manipulate as I'm doing this. Um, and you can use that too, it really, it's up to you. Um, but you can make any colors you want with the primary colors. Again, using dollar store ones, the colors I would say are not like as pure sometimes. So sometimes like your red, like this red is Christmas red. So it might have a little bit more of a pigment than like a more expensive, like real red, you know? So that's the only like annoyance of using these, but um, I roll with it. It's art. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that, and it's not going to be, this is not going to look exactly the same. It's going to look similar and it's going to, but it's going to be ours and it'd be fun. Okay. So. I think we're at the point. Yeah, we're good. Let's do it. Let's plot in where we want this bike to go, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna use some white paint, I think. And if it doesn't show up well, then maybe I might darken it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna use this to plot in where I want my bike. So I want the wheel to be the bottom here, okay? And the wheel is gonna go off the page on the side here. So it's probably about like one fifth of the canvas up. And I'm gonna do like a curve until about one third in. <laughs> These are my directions. Hopefully that's helpful. All right, let's try it. And I'm just gonna do it in white. So, and I'm gonna go with it. And if the wheel looks silly, it looks silly. And it's a weird bike and that's what happens. Um, cool. If you wanna be precise or if going freehand scares you, feel free to grab like a round Tupperware container or something round. Um, or since the kids are starting school, if you have like a what are they called? Protract? No, not protractors. Is it protractor? I don't know. Whatever that thing is that like you put in the middle and you do a circle. Cause mine's definitely not going to be like a perfect circle. Just saying. Okay. But it works. <laughs> I, I enjoy the imperfections personally. I think some people, it drives them crazy. Okay, so that's kind of where my wheel's gonna live. 
and it will eventually be black. Right now, we're just plotting out our bike in white so we know where it lives, okay? And then on this picture, um, around the wheel, there's the metal part of the bike. I don't know the right names for these things, so this is how we're gonna do it. So this metal part, um, it goes above here, and it kind of follows the same flow. Ooh, some like, probably cat hair, realistically. It follows the same flow as the wheel. So my paint below isn't dry yet. So as I'm doing this, it's kind of blending a bit with my background, but I can still see where my guidelines are, which is fine. Once this dries and we put the actual colors we want on here, they're gonna stand out even more because we're using white as like a base. So that's the nice thing about that. Okay, so that's where that is. That's like the metal portion. It will end up being a little thicker. I might thicken it up right now, I think, just. Just for the heck of it. Okay. Fender, I love it. Thank you, Patty. That's great. If you guys know the correct terms, please. <laughs> I don't mind being corrected at all. Absolutely, Carol. So you can find it under the videos tab on the Lisa's Painting Parties website. What website? No, uh, page, Facebook page. I don't have a website. I do have um, a YouTube channel. It'll also be on there too, but it will be just this exact same video posted on there. I'm not going to do another one. <laughs> oh, your cat just brushed against your canvas. There you go. Then you have new texture on your canvas, Meredith. It's all good. Go with it. Maybe you need the cat to brush more on the background and you have like a whole cool pattern going on. All right. So we got the fender of the bike. I'm gonna learn today, this is great. Okay, and then now we have the next part of the bike, <laughs> which is um, the bar kind of thing that goes up towards where the handlebars live. That, that, that's my orientation. And it kind of goes on a slight angle. So the top of it pretty much is in line with like the outside of the fender here. So that's kind of where we want it to stop and we want it to come in about what is one, two, three, like maybe like a quarter. Yeah, like maybe like here. So, okay, so let's try that and see. Let's eyeball it. Oh, I feel like there's too much paint on my brush and sometimes I feel like there's not enough. Um, my YouTube channel is Lisa's Painting Parties. So it's the same as this um, Facebook group and all the videos are on there as well. There's like hardly any views over there, <laughs> but they're there. So please, you can watch it there and uh, have them on in the background. Maybe one day I'll make money from it. <laughs> all right, um, let's just do it. So there's the, the other part of the bike. Okay, it's starting to look like a bike, kind of. Maybe a unicycle at the moment, I suppose. Okay, and then here, the handle kind of like comes out and down. This is the handle in the background. It's not the bigger handle that lives up here-ish. Okay, this is like the background handle, okay? And then we have like the bars on the bike that live like, Let's see. Okay, so that's the back handle part. And they're kind of like, so it's a, they're kind of in the middle. So they're gonna be about here and here and they're gonna go downwards like on an angle as well. Um, so let's do this one first. Let's do this one like this. And as you can see, as I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm using the original image as a reference. It's just on my laptop beside, um, the phone and I'm just kind of following it from there like how it is so so then I'm just gonna do the two lines for the bars of the bike and hopefully I've eyeballed them so they don't look ridiculous hopefully <laughs> 
the good thing is, is if you're doing this and it's not looking right, you can always put another layer and make that the background again. <laughs> so keep that in mind. If you're like, oh, this bike doesn't look good, I need to try it again. Go back and then do the same thing. Make your background again because you're just using white at this point anyways. And then you can always like play with it again. So don't stress out about it at all. Okay. Okay. So now we need to put the other handle of the bike in into play and from the way I can see it kind of curves out like that like it's kind of like a, a C kind of shape and then it comes out off the page so let's plot that in okay and it's, it is hidden by flowers keep that in mind too if anything you do doesn't look that great maybe a flower is covering it so it's all good when we get to the flower portion of it. <laughs> okay. And then now we're going to bring this back too. And this one's going to be a little bigger. Okay. And this one has like some like bumps on it that I can see from the original picture. Because I guess it has the handle. Okay. So that's what we got so far. All right, so we just have the white of the bike plotted out where we want it to live. Not too bad. All right. And realistically at this point, we can also plot out where we want the basket and where we want some of the flowers to go. And I think we should do that now before we start putting in more details of the bike. Um, I do wanna do a few things actually, sorry. I'm going to bounce around a bit. Um, I am going to put in a few more details of the wheel. I'm just going to make this wheel a little thicker. Because I want the paint, when I end up painting this tire, I want the paint to really stand out on the canvas. So I'm just going to thicken up the tire wheel. Cool. And we can always add some more to it afterwards. That works. I'm not going to do the spokes or anything. I'll think I'll, I'll leave those elements for later. Okay. And then this is a little thicker here too, actually. Okay. All right. There we go. This has a little bit of a bump in it, I suppose, too. All right. Fine. Okay. So now let's plot in where we want that basket to live. So the basket in this picture, I'm going to show you the picture again for anyone who does not have it there. So you can't see the basket, like hardly at all. You see kind of the base of the basket, but we still want to know where it lives. So then when we put the flowers in the basket and it's hanging out, it makes sense visually. And once again, if you end up doing it and it doesn't make sense visually, you can always take you know, like a Picasso approach to it. <laughs> so you can do whatever you want again. So don't stress if it's not perfect. Put a flower here and put an eye somewhere else. Okay, so let's um, plot out where we want that basket to live. So the basket does rest. Oh shoot, what was that word again? The fender. So the basket does rest on the top of the fender here. Yay, thanks Deanna. You're like my 20th follower on YouTube, <laughs> I think, <laughs> if even, um, but that's good. It's all good. Um, thank you for that. Um, okay, cool. So again, it's literally just these videos. Like I'm not doing anything else with it. Um, but yeah, but definitely subscribe if you guys want to, that'd be awesome. Um, okay, cool. So my basket is going to live about here. It will eventually touch my um, fender, but I'm not going to put that in at just yet. Okay, and so let's just build where we want this basket to be. And it looks pretty big, like it comes like all the way up, it looks. Okay, so let's just say where we want this basket to be. Okay, so that's the basket itself, more or less, but again, we're going to have flowers all hanging out. Okay. 
Okay, we can't see it, but that's where it lives. Okay. Awesome. And then we want the flowers. And really, it's up to you. If you want to plot some in, we can. So we can just say, okay, like, where do we want? So if I want to kind of follow what's going on with this guy, we have, like, a big old, like, rose that lives, like, here. Right? So that's where the rose is going to live. I think it's a rose. I don't know. <laughs> we have another one that's here. We'll probably paint that one first because it's behind. We have another flower that's coming out over here. Okay. We have another smaller one here. We do some circles to plot in where, we, where they're gonna live. We have another one kind of coming here. I'm kind of thrown off a bit again because I'm not doing a square canvas. I'm doing um, so I did kind of miss out on one of the flowers, but we can always put it back in. It's all good. So there's like a butterfly flower here that lives here. That one looks like here. It's like a butterfly flower there. What else do we got? We have like one with big old leaf up here. So I'm I'm kind of I'm pretty much mimicking what I'm seeing in the inspiration image in my own way, just to kind of block in where I want these flowers to live. It's very high. It's going to obstruct the view of the bicycle bicyclists. Maybe it's just one of those like um, ornamental bicycles, you know, like we, people have them in their gardens. Then it doesn't need to be super useful. <laughs> and then we have another big old flower here okay so let's just keep plotting in how you want them to live this will just help later when we're putting in all the color we're kind of doing like our sketch with our paint brush okay there's like another one kind of coming out this way leaves okay not too bad Okay, and then there's just some leaves and stuff sticking out. I don't know if I need to really worry about that right now. Okay, so we have it plotted out essentially like where we want certain things, okay? So you do the same thing. If you're doing it on, you know, the horizontal axis, do this, you know, figure out kind of how you want the bouquet to live. I think I'm still gonna have some things like hanging off here. Maybe I'll put some things in front. I don't know right now. Um, but for now, we kind of have like, some idea of where the flowers are gonna be okay so it's just with white paint and just kind of go so right now I'm just gonna wait a little bit because um, I want this to dry and it's again it's really up to you like your flower basket um, maybe you want to put in like a sunflower maybe you want to put in a baguette like whatever you want um, you can kind of structure and decide where you want the flowers to be, okay? Okay. Hey, Shelly. So, yeah, I do go a little quickly, um, more for time-wise um, than anything. Well, 
I do speak very fast regardless. So it's not just time. It's just my personality, <laughs> to be honest. But this video um, is available um, on the video section afterwards. So if you're finding that it's going a little quickly, you can always, anyone can always watch it afterwards. Unfortunately, when it's live, you can't like pause it or rewind it in the moment. Um, but that is my speed, unfortunately. But it's free. So <laughs> hopefully that counts for something. <laughs> All right, so my bike is pretty dry, so I think I wanna start putting some color on this guy. I think so. And then we'll build from there, okay? We'll see how that goes. All right, let me take a look at where we're gonna start. When we start putting some color. I think we're gonna start with the wheel, to be honest. So in this, um, so our inspiration image, again, the paint style is very, um, whoa, -oh, there goes my light. One second. Mm, I don't think it's going to work. I might have to change it up afterwards. Okay, that's fine. Um, the paint style is very free. You can really tell it's painted. It's nice big strokes. Um, not so worried about having it like super blended. So I'm going to try to emulate this a bit. This is not like my regular style. So let's have fun with it and see what we can do. The next, so the next thing I'm gonna start to work on is um, the tire. So I'm gonna work on the black and then get the gray spokes happening and putting some gray detail in. We're gonna do that next. And then after that, we'll start working on the frame of the bike, okay? So first thing is first, make sure my light I think it's okay. Mm, it's a little dark. One second. Let me see if I can fix that without it being annoying. Oof. No. Okay. My apologies. This is being annoying. Okay. okay, well that's what's gonna happen right now. Hey Deanna. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Well, have a good time at work. Hopefully it's a good um, shift, whatever you are doing. And absolutely, I love to see it when it's done. Okay, cool. All right, so let's start plotting in this bike. So. I'm gonna jump in right away with black and we're gonna play with that. Okay, so I'm gonna try. So I'm just gonna get black paint and start to fill in, just like as if you were coloring. And that's how I'm approaching this. I'm trying to mimic the inspiration image as much as possible. So now that I have my base of where I want it to live. I'm going to start blocking in my color. And I'm going to try not to worry too much about it not being super smooth, easy strokes. But that is a challenge for me. I'm just putting in black on the wheel. I try not to get black on the frame of the bike because I want it to be like a light blue or a lighter color and the black's gonna make it harder for that color to pop. So my paint below it is um, dry but it's not 100% dry so it is becoming a little gray for me which is actually working for my benefit okay so I'm just bringing up the tire okay
side too. Okay, so I just want to get this tire sorted. I think I need to change my paintbrush a bit because it's, this paintbrush is not super. Uh, I'm using my medium brush for this part, but the bristles aren't easy to control, so I'm not getting like as smooth of a line as what I want, even though I should be letting go and just enjoying the painting process, but it's still bothering me. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to rinse that out a bit. I'm going to just switch to one of my brushes that isn't so hard bristled okay let's try this one and see if that will be nicer so I'm just using one of my thinner not my thinnest brush but just one that I might have a bit more control of to make this a bit more straight okay so I'm just going to be a bit of a perfectionist and try to clean up the lines a bit. I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit. Okay, and I want to have a bit of a, oh, that's actually pretty dark black, so I'm just going to blend it in a little bit because the white from below when I put my initial layer on made it a little gray, so those little black marks that I put on, or the lines I put on, are very norm, like noticeable, so I'm just going to blend it in a little bit to try to give it a bit of that patchy paint feel. <laughs> So I'm trying to be very structured and detailed into giving it like a, an I don't care feel. <laughs> it's essentially what I'm doing. I'm just going to put some more black in here and spread it out a little bit to kind of look a little bit more loose in the approach. Okay, so I'm going to make um, like a dark gray. So I'm going to put a little bit of my black into my white and kind of get a dark gray going on and we're gonna just put the kind of paint in the rims of what that's gonna look like right so and then in the original it's kind of like loosely added in a very like free paint way like so if it you know slightly off it's okay <laughs> it's really hard for me to paint like that it's really hard we're, but we're gonna do it today guys there you go oh my god it's driving me a little crazy that the line is like not super straight okay that's it that's what we're doing we're gonna do this today why not right there you go loose loose with my paint the feeling of a bicycle all right right the inspiration image is way more like blotchy than this. It's almost like non-existent in some spots. It's very weird. Okay. 
All right, let's get some of these spokes in. So with that same dark gray. <laughs> oh, it looks so strange because it's not like even, but it, it that is the vibe of the picture. Okay, I need to like let go, guys. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna get some dark gray on my brush and let's put in some of these spokes in. So let's just put in, and again, I'm not gonna worry about the line not being completed. We're just going to drag it down. It's our inspiration items, item, inspiration image directs us to make it nice and, ooh, not really crooked. It's still pretty straight. That's what we got. Um, I think I need it to continue until the bottom though. I feel like it's strange that all of them stop just before the bottom. Doesn't look doesn't look right. I think we need another one here. I feel like I'm more comfortable with that. Maybe one here. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. These are a little bit close. That looks a little bit strange, but that's okay. We're gonna go with it. Not gonna stress about that. No, I am not. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of white, just add a little bit of accent on, I'm just going to put a little bit more of these, a little bit of white just to highlight this a bit. We'll see. There we go. There is the wheel. I'm just gonna step back a bit just to look at it. Okay, not too shabby. Okay, so I do really like the turquoise of the bike. I don't have a turquoise color. I have blue and I have white. So I'm gonna see what happens oh thanks Queenie yeah anytime you can always watch it any other time thanks so much for stopping in Queenie would join a lot in the beginning too which is really nice thanks for stopping in I appreciate it all right so Let's see, I'm gonna mix up and maybe do like a light blue. I think that's gonna be my variation. I could always add like a drop. Eh, let's just play with that, okay. I kinda think I want my bike to be purple. That'd be kinda fun too. Anyways, okay, no, I, I'm, I'm being distracted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with um, my medium brush. This one's um, more of a softer bristle. This is also like a dollar store brush. It looks nice and fancy for it. It has a grip as well. Super fan of that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just make, so basically I'm putting like a little bit of blue into my white and I'm just making kind of like a, a light blue, like a baby blue kind of color. And I'm not gonna stress too much about the actual shade because again, this whole painting is kind of like loosey goosey in terms of how it um, the color so we can always like mix it a little bit more once we put the paint on here, right? So let's start here um, So let I'm gonna start and put some color on this piece So kind of just like again like we did with the tire we're going to color it as if we're coloring in like a, like a coloring book or something, right? Gonna go over what we drew in with the white. Okay, and we're just going to put whatever color you want. So if you want to use blue, you want to do turquoise, you want to do purple, you want to do pink, it doesn't matter. Make your bike whatever. You want to do a multicolored bike. Go nuts. 
whatever color you want to use, do it. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing back here. I'm just gonna get this color on there. Nice. Okay, so once we have it on, this is like wet on wet painting, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of like a darker blue, kind of like where it meets that other piece here, and I'm just bringing it on one side here. As I'm doing it though, every time, oh, hold on, I can't talk right now. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. Okay. So I want it to be a little darker, just close to where this bar, the, hand, the bar that goes up to the handlebars is. But when you do wet on wet, you kind of need to keep putting whatever color you want to add back on the brush because it very easily blends in with the with the paint that's already on there so I'm putting in a little bit of white on this side here make it a bit lighter and I'm getting the darker blue on the underside. Honestly, the white is taking over. The dark blue is not even coming up. To try to get this like more blotchy paint kind of flow. Hi, Cindy. Yep. Yeah, so the original inspiration painting is this painting here. It's bike with flower basket here. And you can grab that image from the post from yesterday, the winning post. Okay, so again, let's put some bit darker in here. I'm not gonna make this guy dark. I wanna make him, keep him pretty light. Okay, so I can't stop touching it. I really like it when it's more blended. I'm trying to give it a more like loose painting style but like I said that's pretty hard for me because <laughs> I feel like the looser I am like the more I paint brush the you know it kind of like gives it weird ends or like the lines are a bit odd when I go too free it goes a little stick with that. I would leave it to have like a turquoise color like that bike. It's so much prettier. Okay. Okay. And then now let's work up on this handle or this bar towards the handlebars. So I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just put our blue paint and just like we did before, we're going to, as if we're coloring in on top of that white guideline that we put in initially. So let's just bring that all the way up.
Okay. Now it was, it's a bit darker. I'm kind of on this side of it. I'm just gonna try to touch it with the blue without blending it in too much. And then it's like a little bit above here. And I think it's a little bit, you can't really see that too much. Actually, this, you know what? It's actually really dark above here. Kind of like this side is kind of like darker a little bit. Okay, so now let's continue coloring on our bike, whatever color you're using. And this piece on a bike, this part gets welded to this frame. So I'm just gonna go over the frame a bit to try to get that feeling that this part is attached and not just like randomly like sticking out of it. I feel like that's getting a little bit wide and I can't tell. Okay, there we go. Okay. So. It has a bit of dark here, like under. A little bit more here. And there's some around here. But we want this part to be a little lighter. Oof. A lot of paint on that brush. There we go. Okay, so I'm just doing it like on top like that. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same type of thing. You can't really see it as much on this one, to be honest, but. And then this guy is a little darker on that side. Okay. Trying just to add some streakies in it, like in white and then a little bit of dark blue just to play with the color of it and the feeling of it, right? Okay. Awesome. All right, let's just carry on to this part too. So again, I'm just gonna, as if I'm coloring in so the white that I initially like sketched out where I want the bike to be, now let's put some color in. So I'm just going over that area with my bike color, which I've chose this like sky blue. And again, you, could, you can choose any color you want. 
can make the handles a different color if you want. So if you're digging it and you want to do something else, go for it. There's a few things with this guy here. I think that's the basket, actually. Okay. So, there's a little darker under here, these areas. A darker. as well. It's a little darker. So when I do that, I'm just getting like a darker color, whatever your bike color is. I'm going to pop that in there. Okay, I really don't really want it to stay lighter in this area. lighter on the top of the handles. Okay. Don't really like those handles too much. Okay, so I'm just using some of the gray that I made for the spokes just to um, add a bit more shadow to this bike. And I'm just using it because I think it's working well with the light blue kind of bike that I have going on here. And I'm just going to add it a little bit. To kind of define some of the darker areas. using some of the gray just to again trying to be loosey-goosey with my strokes and not worry so much about it looking exactly like a perfect bike and just having fun with the color play so put some gray in this area because this is kind of where a shadow lives I'm just touching it a little bit with gray in certain areas just to make it give it a bit more shadow in certain spots. Okay, cool. All right. So it's seven o'clock, so we've been doing it for an hour now. So I'm going to move from the bike, even though I still want to keep touching it. Um, I still want to put either some more color or make it pop a bit differently. Um, the more you layer on with acrylic, the more deeper and richer it looks. So if you end up starting with this and you want to like, you're like, oh, I'm not so crazy about it, you can then put another layer on top and that will actually continue to build depth into it. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to move on and start to fill in our basket and start with some of the flowers that we have going on over here. So um, the basket in this one is brown. I do have a pre-mixed brown called cinnamon brown, which again, 
you can use any brown. This is just the one I have from the Dollarama. If you don't have brown, you can make the basket any color you want. It doesn't matter. Okay. And let's do the same thing that we did before where we're going to basically color in with paint the outline of the basket that we put in with the white. And for the basket, I know we're going to put flowers as well. So I'm going to try to stick. Like, I don't want to put brown on top of where I want the flowers to be because I do want the flowers to pop as much as possible without having to add more white to it. So I'm going to try and stick with the brown part of the basket just in this area here. I do want the basket to connect with the bike here because it should be resting there makes more sense that way okay and really you can paint it any which way you want if you want to go detailed you can you can try and put some little design I'm not gonna do that too much because it is in the background and the flowers are really the the big focal point of this so I know the basket kind of sticks out a little bit here okay Just gonna get it in there in brown. Maybe add a little bit of black. And I'm just moving my um, brush kind of like horizontal and vertical. Cause you know how baskets have that like kind of crosshatch feeling. So with this brush, by doing that, it kind of gets that vibe with just the brush strokes which again is like the whole like we want the feeling of things without worrying about it being perfect right so that will kind of give you that idea that there's like that basket weaving effect without trying to be like super perfect on it has, there you go looks kind of cool like that Although I really don't like that line. It's very, let's see, I want it to be straight. I'm just gonna touch that up a little bit. Okay, then I'm not gonna touch anymore. There you go. I can't see it anymore. I'm not sure what you can't see, Yeita. Um, the image, yeah, it's still, I haven't moved the camera or anything, so everything's still in the same spot. So I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, so next up is, now that we have the basket kind of done, it looks like there's a kind of a cool design on the basket at the bottom here. It looks kind of neat from the inspiration image. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna just start playing with the flowers um, for the interest of time because the flowers are really fun to do, but they can take up some time. <laughs> so let's see what colors we want to use. Okay, um, so I do need to get some red and some yellow. And again, it's whatever colors you want. You don't have to make them the same as this picture. You can make them your own variety. I might make some of my own for it so I'm putting some red I'm putting some yellow I'm putting some green I have some pre-mixed green as well um, I have some pre-mixed pink as well but I might just mix my red and my white together it depends I might just kind of go back and forth and play with that and I have some pre-mixed purple if you don't have the pre-mixed colors that's okay you can mix them and make your own colors so if you need purple you can mix red and red and blue together um, depending on how you want to go. I'd probably do like two parts red, one part blue to kind of have more of a brighter, um, a lighter purple. Um, if you want to do a green, I'd probably do two parts yellow, one part blue as well. And then you can kind of get a nice green. Um, pink, you just mix red and white. Um, again, I'd probably do two parts white, one part red, and then make it darker if you want to. Okay. 
Um, or if you have pre-mixed, then use pre-mixed as well. Whatever you prefer. I have pre-mixed orange as well. And if you need to mix, make your own orange, it's red and yellow. Cool. All right. So which shall we play with today? Let's see. We should probably do one. Hmm. Which one's most kind of in the background? Let's start with the one furthest in the background. We can build on top of it. I think I'd like to start with this guy here. This pink flower that's nice and flippy floppy and pretty and beautiful so what I'm going to start with is dun 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 I'm gonna go right in for pink yeah let's do that let's do some pink and some white so let's do some white just to get it wet again so again the exact same thing we did before we're coloring in. So you drew it with your white paint. Okay, and now we're going to color in what we made with whatever color we want to start off with. So let's start with the base. So I'm going to go here with pink. And as I'm painting and filling it in, I'm just getting like white paint continue it and if it's becomes streaky it becomes streaky and that's fine that actually can work in our favor because we want to give it some character all right so I'm just putting in so I'm trying to keep it so you can see the paint strokes so if I have like a darker part of it. I'm trying to keep it nice and dark. I'm going into white and then I'm putting in some white and then just mixing it up, changing it and even doing some color mixing right on the canvas. Like I'm not pre-mixing and doing it. I'm playing with the wet on wet paint and just putting in some white and some pink. And when you put in, like, if you want the white to stick, like, to stay and be bright, you don't want to keep going over it um, with it because it will just keep blending because it's wet paint and it will just keep blending into each other. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to do this leaf now. My hand is probably in your way, but that is the way it has to be right now. All I'm doing is going over this next pink leaf. Leaf. Yeah, petal. That's what I meant. That's what I mean to say. And then we're gonna just put some darker pink strokes in the middle and on the side. Kind of like that. And as when I put it in, I'm gonna try not to go over it again with my brush. I'm just gonna like leave it where it lands. And that's really hard for a control freak like me. <laughs> so if you're also a bit of a control freak, it's hard to just like do it and then like not touch it. This is your challenge. You're gonna put it in and you're not gonna go back over it. You're just gonna leave it. Okay. So you want some of those colors to stand out without getting blended into the background, right? So let's get this this guy in the background here too. This guy goes over the handle a little bit. Okay, so this one's kind of weird. How do I want this to be? So it kind of like curves because the petal is kind of curved ish a bit. I'm gonna get some lighter pink and we're gonna just touch it with lighter pink or the brighter pink, I should say, not the lighter pink. And just touch it and then leave it. Okay. 
I want to put some white in these gaps. Okay. Okay, so I think that looks nice and bright and pink and pretty. All right, okay. So, and you can play with it. And like I said, if you want to get the color to bright, when you're doing wet on wet, you kind of need to like get whatever color. If you're doing white, then you want to like get the white and just stroke it and then leave it. If you stroke it and you go over it again, that white is going to blend into the background because wet on wet just like blends everything together. It's really easy to blend. If you don't want it to blend together, you want to just stroke and don't touch it. <laughs> okay. And then you choose a different color. You get like the darker pink or the white or whatever you end up doing. And then that's how you kind of are able to have like... It kind of already has a bit of a blend in some ways, but then the other color kind of stays on really strong and bright in it. I'm going to touch it again after I told you guys not to touch it again. There you go. And if you do it, then you just know that you're going to end up blending the colors more, right? So just keep that in mind. So if you end up going on top of it, you're taking away some of the definition. So like, like what I just did, I took it away, but then if I want to add it in, I just need to go back. get the color and put it back in. Okay. And then you touch it and it's annoying. <laughs> it doesn't look as nice afterwards, I find. All right. So that's that bright pink background flower. And I think we should keep going with the flowers that are further in the background because then we can layer on top from there. Okay. So that there's that one. So the next flowers that we were look at doing, we could either do this like butterfly one that's on this side, All right? That would be a good one to do. Or we could do this kind of big red blotchy rose kind of flower. I don't even think it's a rose. It looks like one of those, what are the dahlias? I think they are. I'm not sure. They're like the ones with a lot of leaves. Leaves. Oh my gosh. Petals. Really full and pretty. So I'd probably do either like that one or this butterfly flower. Okay. So I'm just going to clean off my brush because I don't want to make this next flower the same color. I usually have two water containers because I find that my paint gets really... Um, dirty very quickly especially like using a background of gray or anything with black tends to happen okay. okay I haven't seen any other comments come in so I think we're still good I know once I did a paint party and then after I did the live I looked at it and there's a bunch of comments I missed so I'm hoping I'm, I can see them all I haven't seen any other scammers come on which is nice so hopefully they've just got tired and they've left left us alone Okay, I think I'm going to do this like butterfly kind of background flower here. So I'm going to start with white just to go over what I already did and just to kind of to wet the canvas again. Why wouldn't I do it for the flowers from the inside out? Um, in terms of like the middle of the bouquet outwards. I feel if, if that's what you're referring to the one there's some flowers in the middle that I feel like are on top of the flowers that are um, behind it so I'm trying to go with whatever is furthest in the background and work my way up to whatever is closest to the foreground so that's my thought process on it if, if there's a different way to do it or if you like to do it a different way go for it. I'm not saying that my way is like the best way. It's, it's just my process, how I would approach it. So yeah, you can do it any which ways you guys want to. It's all good. Okay. So there we go. So I'm just going to start 
slotting that guy in. I feel like this might be weird here. Mm. There's like a flower behind here though, I think. Hmm. I want to do that one for sure, and I feel like I didn't sketch him in properly. You know what? There is a little bit of green on this flower, and I think I might want to put that in before I do this guy, because otherwise he, I might ruin him up a bit. Yeah, so I'm just going to abort this one for a moment, and I want to... Mm, that's going to be tricky, because this, this is still pretty wet. I want to put the green because sometimes under the flower there's like you know green that kind of like holds the flower on top so I want to put that in but I don't want to mix green into my pink because that will look not so not so pretty um let me see if I can get away with doing it a little bit down here though okay so I'm gonna get green I'm just gonna put in the base of that flower so I'm mixing my my green, which is a pre-mixed green, with some yellow just to lighten it up slightly. It's very dark green and I don't want that. And I'm going to just put in I don't know what it's called exactly, but just the green part that's kind of like where the flower sits in. So I'm just going to pop that in just before I put something else potentially on top of it. And the same tactics. I'm going to get some yellow now and just want to highlight some of the areas. Just going to put a little bit like that. And then I'm going to get pure, a darker green and put it more. I'm trying to be more free with my paint strokes, but it is hard. <laughs> so I'm trying to blend it out. It's like, oh, I don't like that. Oh, I like this. Oh, I don't like that. That's okay. Okay. That's a bit more, that's as free form as I'm going to get. Yeah, stems. <laughs> That, that's what, yeah, that's what it is. The stems of the flower. Yep, there you go. It's funny, for my lack of vocabulary, I actually have um, a journalism degree, which is hilarious. Because um, English was a big part of making sure you could, you know, report news stories. <laughs> but uh, speaking, yeah, that's another whole thing. My brain does not work. I'm going to blame the fact that I worked all day and my brain's kind of brain dead. But honestly, I, I think I was doing this even before when I had was not working and doing the paint parties. It was still happening. So I really don't have an excuse at all. Okay. So I'm just going back over because this is where I kind of started and I had wet this flower up so that it would be nice and uh ready to go for us and i want to make this kind of like a bit of yellow not like full-on yellow but like a very light like mixed with a white kind of yellow petals that's how i want this guy to be so the way i'm doing it is it's white paint and then i'm just putting yellow paint on kind of like one side of the petal and i'm just bringing it over to the other side and because it's wet the white paint is mixing and blending it so it's already becoming a bit lighter right away on the canvas and then I'm going to go back in with my white and then now just try to put just some white lines on here just to make it look a bit streakier and Kind of a, a nice feel. So 
So just give it a go. Yep, I like that guy. And then I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> true we're so hard on ourselves aren't we it's ridiculous <laughs> so funny with everything that's going on too in the world like it's it's funny how we still are hard on ourselves you know it's like okay we need to give ourselves a break things are crazy we literally have like a great excuse <laughs> All right, so that's that guy there. All right, let's see, where else do we wanna go? Um, I really like that flower and I don't think I really put him in, I don't know how I'm gonna draw him, I wanna draw him. No, but I need to do another one first, I think. Okay, so I think, which one are we gonna go to next? Maybe this one back here, no, this guy's in the back. Yeah, we gotta do, we gotta do this guy here. This guy's kinda like a big, like red, flower going on there <laughs> okay I want to make him a little bit so I'm gonna use red I'm gonna do this guy here and this is like a swirly flower let me show you which one I'm talking about if you don't have that ready there okay so we've done this like pink one and I did the light white yellowy butterfly type looking flower and then I'm gonna work on this one now. So this kind of like red, swirly background flower there, okay? So that's what I'm gonna be trying to emulate that kind of feel to it. So I'm gonna use red paint. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in it so it'll be a more pink, but not as pink as that really bright one. I still want it to have red in it, so that's important. Um, okay, so let's... darker in the center so let's just fill that all in same like we did before use our coloring and fill it all in that's the guy we're working on right now okay and now okay, so again we're gonna dip into our red paint and we're going over on the wet paint. So we want just to do like a one stroke and then we wanna get more paint on our brush. Otherwise, it will pick up the paint that's below it and it's not going to be as dark red or that color, whatever color you wanna to try to put on isn't gonna show up as much, so it's gonna blend into the back, okay? And then I want to do a little bit of dark on this side. And the petals kind of, well, it's really, honestly, it's very swirly. It has this kind of like swirly feel to it. Less about petals and more about, I guess, the movement of how this flower lives. So it's kind of like has some, I put like a C and like kind of like little swirls like that. And now I'm gonna go into my white and go in the areas that I didn't paint with the red and my brush still has red on it so that's it's still gonna come through right and now I'm gonna just go in and kind of put in the rest of the swirls with the white touch it a little bit and then I'm gonna regret it and then I'm gonna go back <laughs> with dark with the red again and then touch it again with the red that's my painting process back and forth And every time I'm going, I'm going always back and grabbing some more paint on my brush. I kind of have this like swirly effect. 
very painted flower. All right, so that's how, that's that guy. I think I'm gonna leave that guy as is. I'm, I'm enjoying the swirls of it. It looks it looks pretty cool. We're gonna live. We're gonna go with that one. That one's good. Okay. And then I want to do. There's a big one that's similar, but I can't do that one just yet because then the reds. I have to wait till that dries off a bit. It's like a very white. With almost some like it almost looks like yellowy brown almost kind of weird but it's mostly white flower there okay, i'm just gonna clean off that one okay and i think while that red guy dries i want to jump to this one here because this one we can paint because that one goes on top of my butterfly guy and behind this big reddy orange flower that's there Okay, and this one is, um, this one on, in this painting is kind of like a yellowy, like a dark yellow, maybe a little bit of orangey-ish into it. And I think I'm gonna swap to my, a bit of my smaller brush for this one. Okay, so let's start this guy in the same kind of way. So I'm gonna get yellow paint. And again, as we've been doing, I'm gonna go over the white that we painted initially to give us that where this flower lives. Okay. Okay, and then now I'm just going to pull the yellow and I'm just going to like with the brush it's just the same yellow color. I'm just kind of going in like little kind of curves and like moving back and forth a bit. I'm gonna grab my orange and I'm gonna do the same thing. So now I'm gonna try to make sure as I'm going through this process that I'm covering the background. Cause I didn't do like a full on coverage of the yellow when I did it. Okay, and I'm going back to the yellow and I'm gonna do the same kind of Dabby and I'm gonna go back to my orange and just kind of add some more little boop boops back to my yellow do the same thing And you'll see again, like every time I'm kind of going back with one of the other colors I want, I'm dipping it back in the paint. And I do want to make sure I can't see that background that well, which is good. It's a nice full one, that's pretty. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in it too. So I wanna add a little bit of white. The same thing is every time I put white and I want the white to stand out, you need to re-dip. So I'm just kind of keeping white in that center area here. I'm not gonna put any at the bottom, I don't think. Maybe I will, maybe like this. <laughs> no, can't really tell, that's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna keep the white more in the center here. And it's kind of a bit bigger strokes at the bottom and smaller strokes at the top and it kind of looks more like a con, like a, it's tighter in the center and it kind of goes out further. Like it kind of opens up. Okay, so that's that flower. It's pretty. In the picture, it's kind of more like bang on. Like this one looks like the base is here. So in the picture, it kind of looks like the center is here and it's kind of filling to the side. So that may look a little bit funky afterwards, but again, I'm not gonna stress about that. We're just gonna enjoy the process. Okay, what's another one that we can do that's living in the background? Let's see. Okay. So, again, this one is the next one I want to do, but this is still pretty wet, so I don't want to touch that one yet. Um, probably, maybe this guy here. Another kind of butterfly, nice leafy one that looks similar in color to this one, maybe a bit darker. So yeah, maybe we'll do that one next. So let's do that. Oh, sitting cross-legged on the floor, my knees 
is starting to not be my friends. Okay, let's start off. Let's get some white. Have some yellow still on that brush, but that's okay. Okay, so let's. Okay, so let's cover this all in white. Still using my thinner brush, so it takes a little bit longer for me to cover it up, but works out still. Okay, and I want this to be more yellow. So again, I'm going to put yellow on top of the white and I'm just going to bring it inward. So I think for here I'm going to do here and I'm going to bring it inward like that and then it, that's how it can blend. So I start with a nice dark and as I bring it in it blends with the white and then it becomes like a lighter yellow. There and then I bring it in. Nice. And then the same process if you want to do white on the outside, same thing. And then you bring it in towards, so you start with the lighter. And you can bring it in. Cool. Actually quite a bit of yellow on that brush now. All right. Make it more white. I don't think I'm going to do much more with that guy. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I like him. And I guess we could do this one, but I'm a little worried because I don't want that red to seep in. I'm trying to think what else we can do to continue moving along without. Messing up other flowers. <laughs> okay. I think, I think this one is safe to do. It's another concentric kind of like ready orangey one. All right, so similar to how I did this one, only I'm gonna to try to keep it tight in the middle and looser around the sides for this one. Um, let's, what colors? Um, I still wanna make it a bit darker though. Okay, let's go. Let's go like orangey red. So let's, so let's just go and kind of around the circle that we created. Yeah, this will work well because even if we pull from that other flower, it's gonna be okay. Okay, so we're going to do like little, again, crescent shapes. Okay, I'm gonna go into orange now. And every time you want the color to stand out, you need to dip it back into the paint. So doot, 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 dip, dip, round, round. I'm trying to keep it tighter in the center. I'm gonna go back to red now. And bigger around the sides. Okay, so bigger curves on the sides and tighter in the center. And I kind of like, you know what? I don't really want to touch that guy anymore. That kind of looks really nice like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave that one the way it is. And that's a big thing. If it kind of works and it's looking right, it's knowing when to stop. <laughs> it felt really early to stop there, but you know what? I really like the way the, the colors and the strokes look on that. So I don't want to mess it up. So we're gonna leave that guy the way it is. Okay, let's see what else we're gonna do. Okay, so we still need to get this guy in the background. 
I think that might be the next one, realistically. We can obviously put some of the leaves as well. We want to do some of those while we're waiting for other parts to dry. So maybe let's, yeah, let's do that. So let's put in, there's a little bit of greenery that's coming out of here and out of here. So let's play with that a little bit. So I'm going to get, I have my pre-mixed green. I'm going to put some yellow in it just to lighten it up a little bit. I just want it to be a bit lighter green. And instead of using white to lighten it up, I'm just going to use yellow just to give it a little bit of a yellowy kind of green vibe instead of just like a pure light green. Okay, and we're just going to, let's put in, oh, sorry. Sometimes, sometimes when the paint is on the brush, I look at it and it's too globby on the middle. I know it's not going to spread very easily. So I just want the, when I put the paint on my brush, I want it to be a bit more even, right? Sometimes it looks very, like once I mix paint as well, if you mix paint with your brush, the paint ends up like sifting or shifting to the back. That's not really going to give you smooth lines. Now that's better. Okay. And I'm not going to worry too much about how realistic my leaves look. I want to get the vibe that there's some more greenery happening over here. And I'm trying to get some of the darker green and add it a little bit into my light just to give it a bit more feeling there. Okay, let's do the same thing up here. Let's put Okay, cool. Okay, just have a little bit there. Hi, Sandra. Yep, it will be. You can um, watch it under the videos tab on Lisa's Painting Parties on Facebook, or you can watch it on my YouTube channel, also Lisa's Painting Parties, and it will be there after this is done. I'll post it up later tonight. Absolutely, and it will always be free. In case those scammers go on there and try to get you to pay for it or something. Don't pay for it, it's free. Just putting in a little bit of yellow in some of those leaves just to add some more fun to it. Okay, cool. Let's see where we're at. I put a lot of paint on that guy. <laughs> it's taking a while to dry. Although the bottom's almost dry there, so I think we can start playing with that background flower uh, momentarily. So that is good. Very, very good. Yeah, my pleasure, Sandra. Absolutely. It gets me being creative which is something I was missing for a long time. It's very, very fun for me. Okay, so um, I am gonna start doing this guy here. It's kind of like a, a fluffy white flower. So similar to what we did before. So we're gonna, let's, so this one's gonna go over some of these. Okay, so into the same kind of groove where I'm going to start by just filling in what we sketched out. I definitely have fewer flowers in my basket than on the inspiration image because my canvas, again, is a bit thinner on this side, so my basket's a, a bit smaller since I'm doing it as a portrait instead of as a square. So there's fewer flowers in there. Okay, so I have that. Now, kind of like a brownie 
brownish color. I don't know if I like that or not. I'm going to try. I have pre-mixed brown here. Let's see how that works if I try and swirl. Ah, oh, you know what? That, that kind of works. So it's just, again, touching with the brown. It's kind of working. And I'm making it a little tighter on the inside here. Is that the inside of the flower there? Okay, and then I'll go back around with white. Make it a little wider. On the side there. Mm -hmm. I just want to put more white back in. So I'm trying to give my strokes bigger around the outside of the flower. And then when you get into the center, we do like little smaller strokes because the petals are more closed together. Okay. And I think I might leave that too. Not touch that anymore. Okay. I might go back in after and put some details and like to put in some of the, um, uh, the middle part of the flower back in. Um, cause there's some, you know, you can see it in the inspiration image a little bit nicer. So we might go back in and do that later. Okay. I really want to paint this flower, the one that has a nice big middle and then it has like very detailed lines kind of coming out of it. The petals are very noticeable. It's not so like big and fluffy like the other guys. So I really want to do that one. So I'm going to try to emulate that one next. So I think we should start and it's definitely going to be a bit smaller than the one in the picture, but I want it to still live there. So let's first put in that middle piece and the middle piece is a kind of like a, like a dirty yellow, kind of like a yellow with a little bit of brown in it. Maybe that's what it looks like to me in the picture. So I'm going to, Mix that up a little bit. Maybe even a little bit of green too, realistically. And it lives kind of like here. Okay. Yeah, I like that color. That kind of works nice. I am gonna get a little bit of green though. And I do want to mess up my nice color by putting green in it. <laughs> no, I think that's fine. That looks good. That color was really pretty though. Brown, yellowy color. Okay, and then these strokes are like a very bright, no, it's more of like a dark pink, purple-ish kind of go hmm I do have purple I wonder how that will work maybe I could do that you know what I might try I'm gonna I have a pre-mixed purple but I'm going to mix it into my pink to kind of get like a little bit of a lighter not so not so dark purple that's what I want to do This is not going to be thin, I don't think. No, okay, I need to switch over to my thinner brush. Yeah, it's going to bother me. It's still not going to be perfectly thin. I can already feel it, but that's okay. So I'm going to get my more detailed brush. Okay. So I'm going to water this paint down a little bit more just so it's easier and more fluid on my paintbrush. I want it to be nice and smooth. And then this starts in the center and then we're just going to bring 
bunch of little thin strokes upwards. And it's okay if we can still see the background on it, that's fine. Because when we're done putting all these little strokes, we're not going to really be able to see it. Anyways. a purple pinky daisy kind of vibe to it at the moment I'm having fun with it I'm going a bit freestyle Brush is pretty wet there. All right, that's pretty fun. That guy is cute, super cute. And this guy has like little yellow ish dots kind of like on the end of it so let's throw those in and see how that looks if we like them if we don't we can always keep them or not whatever you want so I'm just going to freestyle it I should really watch my hand because I'm putting my hand on the painting but it's not what they're thank goodness but I kind of did forget about it so just be cautious <laughs> I'm going on top of where I'm going to end up painting there anyways, but that's okay. So we will put that in afterwards. I'm just putting a little bit of white. Um, I'm mixing some white into my yellow too. I'm just adding a few little dots of that color as well. I'll touch in here too a little bit. Make that a little messy. It looks a little bit more natural like that. Looks better. Okay, cool. There we go. Fun guy. That's cute. Just getting a little bit of brown and just making it a little darker on the one side. There we go. I think that looks a little bit nicer like that. And then I'm just going to add a few little lines in this guy here in brown as well. Looks like the middle of the flower there nicely. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Like that. Cool. Anyone else need something like that? I think we're good right now. Okay. Okay, great. So now we're going to do this big star of the show. <laughs> I'm going to use my um, thinner brush. This is like a number three also from uh, the Dollarama. And similar, it's, I think it's like the same kind of flower as this one, only it's bigger. That's what we're going to be going for with this guy here. Okay. 
So I do need a little bit more red. So similar to how we created some of these other guys, we're going to get the red okay. and let's just have fun with it. So let's have nice, big, sweeping motions to have a nice perimeter of the flower. How big is this guy going to go? It's going to go big. This. Oh yeah, look at this guy. Beautiful. Okay, and as we get in to the center, we are going to get a little bit tighter with our strokes. Okay, cool, right? Now let's get some orange and do the same thing. Nice big petals all around the side. So pretty. And I'm gonna try to put my strokes in the gaps. So I cover the background as I'm filling in the petals and smaller strokes in the middle. Okay, let's go back to red. And as we do this, you want to make sure we're dabbing into the red each time. So we're keeping the integrity of that color. And again, try to get all so the background is not poking through. Oh, so pretty. Flowers are fun, eh? Especially these ones that are very uh, free, free form. I need more red, actually. Oof, maybe that was too much at this point, but that's okay. We will have fun with it anyways. Let's get some more orange. Okay, and just keep going until you are happy with the way Feels. I think that's so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna clean that guy off. Okay. Noise, noise, noise. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that one now. I feel like it looks so weird in comparison to the other ones, but that's okay. We're gonna enjoy it. So I'm, I'm missing that little like blue flower that's there and I'm not going to paint him in. I think my basket is almost done. Like I'm going to complete this one and then maybe add a few little elements to it, but I'm going to leave um, that flower out. And then there's another flower that kind of sticks off to the side, which also did not make the cut. So we are going to stick with this as it is. Um, all right, let's paint this here back here. So the one in the picture is kind of like a almost like an orangey brown kind of vibe to it. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's, let's play with the white. Maybe. I'm not sure where I'm going with it. Let's maybe start with like maybe a light. Yeah. You know what? Let's go with like a light, very light brown kind of feel. Maybe I'll put some green. I don't know yet. I'm not sure what I want to do with that guy. 
And if you don't like it, you can paint it a color. If you don't like it, we can paint over it. That's the nice thing about it. Wait till it dries and then you can paint it whatever you want. You can put another big puffy flower on it if you want. It does not matter. I should have painted this one before because it's kind of in the background. Dun 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 dun. Just makes it easier when you go from far back to things in the foreground. It makes it easier to paint because then you're not worried about painting over something that you've just done and then it may look kind of weird. So I'm just getting, touching a little bit of like the brown color and then I'm just giving it a bit of a shadow on one side of the leaf. I'm not sure why it's brown, but mine's brown. And I'm going to do the same thing with white. So now I'm touching that rose and it's bothering me. And I'm just going to put the white on the other side. And also on this stem as well. Try to enjoy the abstract nature of it. Not worry so much. Maybe it's a random weird flower. I don't know what it is. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, cool. What else do we want to add to it? So I do want to put in, with my thin brush, I do want to put in a little bit of um, accent in the middle of this flower here. I do want to do that. All right, so we're good. We're right at eight o'clock already. Whew. That went fast. I'm gonna add a little to this guy too. I'm gonna do that way. Yeah, I kind of like that too. But I want to make it a little darker here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ooh, I'm just adding a little bit of color to this flower back here. And remember, if you go going over your acrylic, it makes it look more depth. Like there's more depth that gets built, the more layers you add. So I just want to touch it up a little bit like that. Kind of put a little bit more color in certain spots of it. I like that. I just put a little bit of brown to like give it a bit of a shadow here. There we go. That's cool. I like that one more now. Okay. So you can kind of like look from a distance a bit and then decide where you want to put some more into it. Um, 
I think we're almost complete. There are a few little flowers kind of things that hang from here. Um, it's kind of like a purpley-ish. I think I'm going to go with the purple I have. And purple's been sitting here for a while. It's a little. And these are kind of like kind of hang down. And then there's also some green that accompanies them a bit. So I put some purple and I'm going to get some green and I'm just going to touch the green kind of at the end of the purple. It's kind of like to give the idea that it's attached somehow, even though they are kind of floating. Look neat. Look like, they look kind of weird. That's fine. Um, and then what else shall we do? There is like a nice leaf, a green leaf that's here. So let's put that guy in. gonna put a little bit of a bit of a highlight in there too. Oop. Well, that was unexpected. Okay, so there's a nice leaf that kind of sticks out over there. Okay. And it's really up to you how much more you want to do if you want to put some more flowers in you want to put some more elements like there are some you know little things hanging around I feel the need to connect these like I it, it kind of is bothering me that they're just kind of like hanging there and nowhere it's I have to I have to connect them somehow I'm sorry I know that's not the way the painting is but I can't I don't know I have to give them like little like Maybe this is going to make it look stupider. Yeah, I don't think that worked. I think that was a bad idea. Don't connect them. <laughs> Actually, no, it's not horrible. My initial feeling was like that, but maybe I just need to kind of keep going with it. Let's see. You know what? Yeah, we're just gonna I'm just gonna go with it. That's fine. That's what I meant to do. It's fine. I'm gonna leave it. It's all good. Uh, I'm gonna even add some more. I'm gonna add some pink to it. Why not? Weird flower things that are growing here. I don't know what they are. They're my imaginary bicycle flowers. That's what they are. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome. So yeah. So I think I'm going to call this complete for today. It is 812. So that's kind of brings us to our just past two hour mark. So here we go. So there is our final. How, that's how mine turned out there. 
my bike became blue. A few fewer flowers than in the original inspiration image. There we go. And the original image, this was our inspiration. This nice turquoise, full beautiful basket. There we go, so that was the inspiration and that is my completed painting. Yay! So I hope you guys have enjoyed this session and uh, please, um, when you're done doing your painting, please um, share um, a picture of it in the comments. Um, I'll take a picture of mine too and I'll add it in there as well. Um, if um, you enjoy this, please uh, like and share and tell other people about it as well because this is uh, a really fun um, project that I've been doing and I really enjoy sharing it with you. So please, um, yeah, I love to see your paintings and um, that's about it. So on Saturday there'll be three more options um, that will be posted and you guys can vote on it. The voting part I really enjoy seeing your comments and everything. And then next Wednesday we will paint again live free right here um, and we'll go from there. Um, and like I said, I think in October I'm going to change the night um, to do it on Tuesdays instead. So just giving you guys a little bit of a heads up. Um, but for uh, September we'll keep it on the Wednesdays for now. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so thanks guys. Have a fantastic rest of your evening and um, see you guys later. Bye.